Om Sai Ram. This is Sai Satcharitra Chapter 27. This chapter covers the following. Granting a consecrated book, Baba's blessings in the form of the Bhagwat and Vishnu Sahasara Nama, Dikshit's Vithal Vision, Gita Rahasya and the Kapades. This chapter describes how Sai Baba blessed his devotees by granting them religious books after he had consecrated them, and a few other stories. Preliminary, when a man dives into the sea, he gets the merit of bathing in all the sacred rivers. Similarly, when a man takes refuge at the feet of the Sadguru, he gets the merit of bowing to the Trinity, that is Brahma, Vishnu and Mahesh, and also the Parabrahma. May victory be unto Sri Sai, the wish-fulfilling tree and the ocean of knowledge, who gives us self-realization. O Sai, create in us a regard for your stories and let the readers devour them with the same relish with which the Chatak bird drinks water from the clouds and becomes happy. While listening to your stories, let them and their families get all the sattvic emotions. Let their bodies perspire. Let their eyes be full of tears. Let their prana be steady. Let their minds be composed. Let their hair stand on end. Let them cry, sob and shake, and let their hostilities and distinctions vanish. If these things happen, that is a sign of the grace of the Guru dawning upon them. When these emotions develop in you, the Guru is greatly pleased and will certainly lead you on to the goal of self-realization. The best way, therefore, to free yourself from the shackles of Maya is complete and wholehearted surrender to Baba. The Vedas cannot take you across the ocean of Maya. It is only the Sadguru who can do so and make you see the Lord in all creatures. Granting a consecrated book, the variety of methods by which Baba imparted advice has already been mentioned in the previous chapters. In this one, we shall deal with one such method. It was the habit of some devotees to bring religious books they wanted to study to Baba and to have them consecrated by him. While reading such books every day, they felt that Baba was with them. Kaka Mahajani came to Shirdi with a copy of the Eknati Bhagwat. Shama borrowed the book to read it and took it with him when he went to the masjid. There, Baba took it from him touched it, and after flipping through a few pages, gave it back to Shama and asked him to keep it with him. When Shama said that it belonged to Kaka and that it had to be returned, Baba said, No, no, I have given it to you, and you better keep it with you for safe custody. It will be of use to you. In this way, many books were entrusted to Shama. Kaka Mahajani, after a few days, brought another copy of the Bhagwat and gave it to Baba. Baba then gave it back as Prasad and asked him to preserve it well and assured him that it would benefit him greatly. Kaka accepted it with a bow. Shama and the Vishnu Sahasaranama Shama was a very close devotee and Baba wanted to bless him by giving him a copy of the Vishnu Sahasaranama as Prasad. This was done in the following way. Once, a Ramadasi, a follower of the Saint Ramdas, came to Shirdi and stayed there for some time. Every day, he woke up early in the morning, washed his face, bathed, and then after wearing saffron-colored clothes and besmearing himself with sacred ashes, read the Vishnu Sahasaranama, a book that gives a thousand names in praise of the Lord Vishnu, held second in importance to the Bhagavad Gita and the Adhyatma Ramayana, the esoteric version of Rama's story with faith. After a few days, Baba thought of favoring and initiating Shama with the Vishnu Sahasaranama. He therefore called the Ramdasi and said to him that he was suffering from intense stomach pain and that unless he took Senapods, a mild purgative drug, the pain would not stop and thus he requested the Ramadasi to go to the bazaar and bring the drug. The Ramadasi closed his book and went to the bazaar. Then Baba descended from his seat, came to where the Ramadasi had been sitting and took the copy of the Vishnu Sahasaranama. Then he returned to his seat and said to Shama, O oh Shama, this book is very valuable and efficacious, so I present it to you. You must read it. I once suffered intensely and my heart began to palpitate and my life was in danger. At that critical time, I hugged this book close to my heart and then Shama 
what relief it gave me i thought that allah himself had come down and saved me so i give this to you read it slowly and read one name at least daily and it will do you good shama replied that he did not want it and that its owner the ramadasi who was a mad obstinate and irritable fellow would certainly pick a quarrel with him for taking the book besides as he was a rustic he could not clearly read the sanskrit letters in the book shama thought that baba wanted to set him up against the ramadasi by this act of his but he had no idea of what baba felt for him baba wanted to tie this necklace of the vishnu sahasaranama around shama's neck as he was an intimate devotee and thereby save him from the miseries of this worldly existence the efficacy of god's name is well known it saves us from all sins and bad tendencies and frees us from the cycle of births and deaths there is no easier sadhana than this it is the best purifier of our mind it requires no paraphernalia and no restrictions it is so easy and so effective baba wanted shama to practice this sadhana so baba forced this on him it is believed that long ago eknath maharaj similarly forced the vishnu sahasaranama on a poor brahmin neighbor and thus saved him the reading and study of this vishnu sahasaranama is a broad and open way of purifying the mind and hence baba thrust this on his shama the ramadasi soon returned with the senapods anna chinchanikar who was then present and who wanted to play the part of narada the celestial sage who was notorious for setting up quarrels between gods and demons informed the ramdasi of what had happened the ramdasi at once flared up he came down on shama with all his fury he said that it was shama who had asked baba to send him away under the pretext of a stomach ache and thus took the book he began to scold and abuse shama and remarked that if the book was not returned he would dash his head before him shama calmly remonstrated with him but in vain then baba spoke kindly to him as follows o oh, ramadasi what is the matter with you why are you so turbulent is not shama our boy why do you scold him unnecessarily how is it that you are so quarrelsome can you not speak soft and sweet words you read these sacred books daily and yet your mind is impure and your passions uncontrolled what sort of a ramadasi are you you ought to be indifferent to all things is it not strange that you should cover this book so strongly a true ramadasi should have no mamata or attachment but should have samata or equality towards everything you are now quarreling with shama for a mere book go and take your seat books can be had in plenty but not men think carefully and be considerate what is your book worth shama had no concern with it i took it myself and gave it to him you know it in your heart i thought shama might read it and profit thereby and so i gave it to him how sweet were baba's words soft tender and nectar like their effect was wonderful the ramadasi calmed down and said to shama that he would take the pancharatni gita in return shama was very pleased and said why one i shall give 10 copies in return so the matter was ultimately settled the question for consideration is why should the ramadasi press for the pancharatni gita the god in which he never cared to know and why should he who read religious books in the masjid every day in front of baba quarrel with shama we do not know how to apportion the blame and whom to blame we can only say that had this not happened the importance of the subject the efficacy of god's name and the study of the vishnu sahasaranama would not have been brought home to shama so we see that baba's method of teaching and initiating was unique in this case shama gradually studied the book and mastered its contents to such an extent that he was able to explain it to professor g g narke the son-in-law of shriman bhuti and a devotee of baba dikshit's vithal vision One day while Kaka Saheb Dikshit was meditating after a morning bath in his wada at Shirdi he saw a vision of Vithal when he went to see Baba afterwards Baba asked him did Vithal Patil come did you not see him he is very elusive 
hold him fast otherwise he will give you the slip and run away then at noon a hawker came there to sell pictures of vital mr dikshit was surprised to see that the form of vital he saw in his vision exactly matched that in the picture and he was also reminded of baba's words he therefore bought a picture willingly and kept it in his shrine for worship gita rahasya baba always loved and encouraged those who studied brahma vidya or metaphysics bapu saheb jog once received a parcel via post it contained a copy of the gita rahasya by lokamanya tilak carrying it under his armpit he came to the masjid and prostrated himself before baba the parcel accidentally fell at baba's feet baba asked him what it was it was opened and the book was placed in baba's hands he paged through the book casually for a few minutes and took a rupee from his pocket placed it on the book and handed both to jog and said to him read this in its entirety and you will benefit greatly Mr and Mrs Kapade let us close this chapter with a description of the Kapades Dada Saheb Kapade once came with his family and lived in Shirdi for a few months the diary of his stay has been published in English in the Sri Sai Leela magazine volume 1 Dada Saheb was not an ordinary man he was the richest and most famous advocate in Amravati and was a member of the council of state in Delhi he was very intelligent and a very good speaker yet he dared not open his mouth before baba most of Both these spoke and argued with Baba, but only three of them—Kapade, Nulkar, and Booty—always kept quiet. They were meek, modest, humble, and good-natured. Dada Saheb, who could expound the Panchadashi, a well-known Sanskrit treatise on the Advaita philosophy by the famous Vidya Ranya, to others, said nothing when he came to the masjid and was before Baba. In reality, a man, however learned he may be, fades away before one who has realized the Brahman and become one with it. Learning cannot shine before self-realization. Dada Saheb stayed for four months, but Mrs. Kapade stayed for 7 both were highly pleased with their shirdi stay mrs kapade was faithful and devout and loved baba deeply every noon she brought naivedya to the masjid and after it was accepted by baba she used to return and have her meals seeing her steady and firm devotion baba wanted to acknowledge it in front of everyone one day she brought a dish containing sanza wheat pudding puris rice soup kheer that is rice pudding and a few other items to the masjid baba who usually waited for hours before eating anything immediately got up went to his dining seat and removing the outer cover from the dish began to partake of the food zealously shama then asked him why this partiality you throw away the dishes others bring and do not care to look at them but this you draw to you earnestly and do justice to it why is the dish of this woman so sweet this is a problem for us baba then explained this food is really extraordinary in a former birth this lady was a merchant's fat cow that yielded a lot of milk then she passed on and took birth in a gardener's family then in a kshatriya family and then married a merchant later she was reborn in a brahmin family i am meeting her after a very long time so let me take some sweet morsels of love from her dish saying this baba did full justice to her dish washed his mouth and hands belched as a mark of satisfaction and resumed his seat then she bowed before baba and began to shampoo baba's legs and baba began to talk to her and knead her arms which were shampooing his legs On seeing this reciprocal service Shama began to joke and said it is going on well it is a wonderful sight to see the god and his devotee serving each other pleased with her sincere service baba asked her in a low and fascinating tone to constantly chant the words raja rama raja rama and then baba said if you do this your life's object will be gained your mind will attain peace and you will benefit immensely to persons unfamiliar with spiritual matters this may appear to be an affair but this was not so it was a case of what is technically called shakti path the transference of power from the guru to the disciple how forcible and effective were baba's words in an instant they pierced her heart 
and found a place there. This case illustrates the nature of the relations that should exist between the Guru and the disciple. Both should love and serve each other as one. There is no distinction or difference between them. Both are one and the same, and one cannot live without the other. The disciple placing his head on the Guru's feet is an outward vision. In reality, they are both one and the same. Those who see any difference between them are yet unripe and not perfect. Bow to Sri Sai, peace be to all. And this brings us to the end of Sai Satcharitra, Chapter 27.